Good morning, friends. This is Steve from Southern Illinois. It's good to be with you again. I thought that I was going to be able to demonstrate to you that we actually have snow here. We had a, an inch of snow this morning, um, but that was three hours ago. And as you can see behind me, we're back to the land of cold mud. As we travel through life, we run into people that we connect with, people we identify with, people that make us feel good about ourselves. We call them friends. Our last three years of our educational career, Vivian and I um, developed a close-knit circle of friends. We were young, beautiful, some of us, uh, courageous, conscientious, motivated, intelligent. We were the up-and-coming generation, intent on social justice, uh, an end to poverty, bringing about peace. We were critical of what the civil rights movement of the 60s had not accomplished. We were critical of the way health care was delivered. We were critical of public education we were critical of the judgmental attitudes of the generation before us. Did I mention that we were young? We were also at a stage of life where children were appearing with a regularity. We celebrated each new birth, laughed at the antics, groaned at the mishaps, and applauded each milestone in their development. <clears throat> High achievers ourselves, we expected nothing less than that from our children. We dreamed that their futures would be as bright as we expected ours to be. After all, we were out to change the world, and they were our first opportunity to prove that we could do it. The results <laughs> were often laughable. My daughter was blessed with a unique name, Terrell. People often got it confused with Carol. She was named after her uncle, Daryl, which made it even more confusing. So we often had to spell out her name before strangers could actually grasp what she was called. Before she was two years old, Terrell took over that job. When someone would mispronounce her name, she would put her hands on her hips and say, No! Tewo! T-E-R-Y-L! She couldn't pronounce her name, but she could spell it. Makes a daddy proud. Before she was three, we went through a miscarriage. It happened so early in the pregnancy that most of our friends weren't even aware that we were expecting. But Terrell had been begging for a baby sister that she was going to name Charlie. Now we had the unenviable task of trying to explain to a three-year-old that Charlie wasn't going to be joining our family as we had expected. The next Sabbath, she went to church and she asked for prayer for her mommy, who was a little bit pregnant, but Terrell wanted her to be all the way pregnant. Strangers laughed quizzically. We blushed and our friends wrapped their arms around us. But the story I really want to share with you today uh, has to do with the, the friend of one of our children in that, that close-knit circle. Uh, Patrick was young enough that he was still eating out of a high chair, but old enough that he had learned that big boys eat with spoons instead of their fingers. So we were at a potluck, a gathering, and we were sharing a meal and um, you know how it is when you have a bunch of toddlers so distractible at mealtime. 
Not hungry, mommy. Go play, go play. There was chaos everywhere. Activity, kids running around, mothers chasing them, fathers chasing them. Except Patrick. Patrick was sitting quietly in his high chair, studiously eating his food. More precisely, studiously eating his peas with a spoon. But the peas were not cooperating. Every time that he would try to get a pea loaded onto the spoon, the peas would roll around on the plate. Try as he might, he couldn't get them to stay on the spoon. And so he resorted to using the other hand and picking them up and putting them on his spoon. And then when he had enough on the spoon, he would start to lift it up to his mouth and invariably the peas would go cascading back down onto the plate. Finally, he resorted to one at a time picking up a pea, putting it on the spoon, and then moving both hands with spoon and pea in tow up to his mouth open his mouth, into the mouth, and the beautific smile that came across his face the first time that he succeeded. The adults who had been entranced with his efforts applauded and cheered. And Patrick was like, what, who, me? And for the rest of the meal, he was moving pea and spoon to mouth, and then looking around, waiting for the applause to recur. Are you having troubles with peas? I am. I and my generation are no longer the up and coming. We're no longer the young and the beautiful. And all our high hopes and expectations, our dreams of changing the world, for every step forward that we've moved the world, we've fallen back two steps elsewhere. And today, we are now being held accountable by our children's generation in the same way that we were critical of our parents' generation. Which is why I'm grateful for the perspective that Jesus brings to peace. You see, Jesus was an idealist. He didn't accept superficial answers. He held people to standards that they hadn't even thought possible. He equated calling people stu to stupid with committing murder. Can you imagine what face would be, Facebook would be like if we held ourselves to that level of social accountability. But at the same time, he was anything but harsh and judgmental to the people who found themselves with peas rolling off their spoons. He comforted their tears, defended them against their accusers, fed the hungry, healed the sick, made the lame to walk, gave the, eye, the blind sight, comforted the despairing, gave hope to those who were suicidal. But then he called them to accountability. But not the accountability that you and I are familiar with. Not the, hey, now you gotta do it. The accountability of Jesus had no judgment, no shame, no punishment, no penance. The accountability, the accountability of Jesus was keeping your eyes on the goal. Look up. Forgiveness without punishment? Reconciliation without penance? These are radical ideas. And he did this at a personal level that put him at extreme risk 
When he encountered a leper, a person with a contagious disease, he touched them and told them to look up. He ate with gangsters. Look up. Prostitutes, look up. His closest associates, his friends, included a domestic terrorist, terrorist, a bigoted racist, a thief, a corrupt civic official. I mean, who wants to associate with these people? Who identifies the, with them? But Jesus called them his friends, and he loved them to the end. Be safe, my friends. And this week, if you find the peas rolling off your spoon, or if you look around and see your neighbors struggling with cascading peas, remember the gospel of Jesus. Don't judge. Look up. I'll see you next week.